Hello. Okay, I've got my work gear on. You're here to work. Uh, I've got you for 20 minutes. I'm going to try to deliver some value. My name is Stuart Corcoran. I'm a principal engineering improvement manager at Red Hat, which is just a fancy way of saying I help teams with their agile and lean improvements. I started my career as a developer back when Waterfall was state of the art, um, before Agile even been invented, and I'm one of the rare breeds that gave up a promising development career to go into QA. Not even QA, but QA management, and then I spent 15 years building test and QA organizations as well as technical support orgs, um, been in executive management, been in consulting. In the last 10 years, I've spent in Lean and Agile because having grown up in that waterfall world, I see all the benefits of Lean and Agile, and I want to apply them throughout the world. So let's talk about breaking down the uh, silos. And starting with a definition, so silo or silo mentality means teams or groups within an organization that won't, can't, or are hindered from working together in an optimal way. I'm going to talk about why that's bad, I'm going to give you some ideas about how to break down the silos, and we're probably even going to try to do a demo. Bet you've never seen that. So here are the takeaways. We'll start with the end in mind, as Stephen Covey would say. Here's what I want you to get out of it as my customers for this talk. I want to give you the ideas about how to break down silos. I want to give you encouragement to persist in this effort because it is hard work. And I want you to know that it's all about profit. So you may be thinking, great, that's the name of the talk, break down silos, I get it. Encouragement, you may be thinking, that's a good thing, I'll go for that. And you may be thinking, it's all about profit, what? Or if you're like me, you're thinking, when can I get out of here and get a beer? But I digress. So let's talk about profit. The reason I want to talk about it is because this is hard work to break down silos. Why do you want to do it? You want to do it because there's a profit motive and you want to avoid riots. I'll get to that. So I think all of you know this, but let's go through it anyway. Most of us are, I assume, paid by companies to do good work and keep you off the streets. Companies need profit to stay in business. Costs, by definition, reduce profit. And delay increases cost. Delay in delivering products and services increases your company's cost. And silo mentality causes delay. So you got all that logic, so let's run it the other way. Silos cause delay. Delay raises costs. Cost reduces profits. Profits puts the company out of business and you're out on the streets rioting and nobody wants that. So let's get back to the other takeaways. Persistence. I want to encourage you to persist in these efforts. You've heard just the last talk and other talks in this track today about teams that have gone through this, either this or other improvement efforts and none of them happen overnight. It doesn't happen like this. You flip a switch, the silos are blown up, and everything's hunky-dory. No. It happens more like this. Hard, incremental work, chipping away at the silos, and making incremental improvements. And that's what we want to do. And what I'm going to do is give you some tools, like this big construction crane, to help you do that. Tools on how to start, tools on how to address the challenges you might face, and then ultimately tools to succeed. And so if you can see down here, I'm this little guy with my uh, vest and my hard hat on trying to help you chip away at the big silos. And just by the way, backing up, I've been looking at this slide for about four weeks now, and just this morning I noticed that guy's there too. It's, it's odd. All right. So that's enough of the vest joke. And I wore orange because I didn't want to make it confused with the yellow vesters. Not one of those, sorry. All right, so our next why, we, just, we discussed why we want to break down the silos because of the profit, because you don't want to be on the streets rioting. 
But why do they cause delay? Well, it's because they lengthen the feedback loop. A silo lengthens the feedback loop. All right, let's start the demo here. Now, you may have seen throughout the, the course here of the two days, people trying to do demos, you know, and you think they're brave doing a live demo. Excuse me. Ah, have a cold. Um, but have they ever tried to do a live demo? They thought up in the middle of the night before being jet lagged and awake and using volunteers that they've never even talked to before. That takes guts, but we're gonna do it. So I need two volunteers, one for an easy task and one for an easier task. Okay, I got one volunteer here, one volunteer there. You want easy or easier? Easy. Easy. Easier task is you're gonna time this test loop, okay? So when I start, just look at the clock, see where we're going, and just when we get done with the uh, passing of the test, that's when we'll stop. The easy task is you're the tester. I'm the developer. You're up there in your silo. I'm down here in my silo. So I've been working on my product here. Here are the requirements. I'm putting them in my container. <laughs> look, containerized. And I would toss this, but my box got broke and it would all fly out. So this all goes up here to that silo. And you start testing while I go on to the next thing on my to-do list. All right, dev and test feedback loops. And by the way, when you're done, you know, just throw it back over the silo wall. Uh, the feedback loop for dev and testers is important because that's how you get the best product, the best quality product, is to have good feedback. Now, the only reason there are silos between dev and test is because there are testers. And the only reason there are testers is because you can't, the developer can't get the best feedback themselves. It's just human nature that if you have created something that you are not going to be the best one to objectively look at it. Uh, that's why you need the tester for that uh, unbiased perspective. So that's why we want those guys. That's why we need to have that information go back and forth. Now, when you have a silo, it takes a long time to get that feedback, to get that information, and it causes delay. And why does it cause delay? Well, because of context switching and context loss, okay? So when you're in a different organization, as dev and test often are, they're often not sharing the same goals. They don't have the same tools. They don't have the same priorities. And they are, therefore, usually going to have miscommunication, misunderstanding, and all of this is going to cause delay. <laughs> really. Okay, well, excuse me while I switch context. <laughs> My product is back, sorry. Sorry, I'm, I'm being delayed in delivering value to you. Uh, the test failed. Four sheets, not three, page zero, and four have too few line segments. Hmm, okay. I don't get it, hmm. Guy's obvious an idiot. <laughs> but he's in another silo. I don't know who he is and I don't care. But I can't move on with a failed, so I'm gonna call him up and uh, I'm gonna say, what I, oh, he, and he kept my pen too. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> well, I will just have to, I will just have to IRC. Not enough information. <laughs> All right, I call up my tester, say, hey, tester, what's your name? Sweet tea. Sweet tea. <laughs> Good to know you, sweet tea. Uh, I got the bug report. Uh, it seems to be a misunderstanding here. Could you, could you tell me your, the requirements? Three sheets of paper, got it. 
Each cheat must have symbols on it. Got it. Each sheet must have five line segments, symbols, straight line variety. Got it. And? There are four sheets of paper. No, what, what, aren't there, isn't there another one? I've got four. A circle symbol counts as two line segments. <laughs> what, 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 what version of the requirements are you looking at? V1. Well, weren't you at the meeting? This is V2. All right, thank you, you get the point. So, context switching, where was I? I was on context switching, just when I had to switch context. You all know this, you're doing work, you get a bug report, you have to drop what you're doing, figure out what the code was that you're working on, fix it, send it back, go back to what you're doing. Very time consuming, causes delay. And of course, open source world is worse, because you have the extra benefit of another silo, if you will, upstream. You gotta send it all up there, get the patches reviewed, comes down, then it goes to test, and you see the point. It just gets longer and longer. And so what we wanna do is shorten that feedback loop as much as possible. So, sweet tea. You know, I think we should break silos. Come on down. All right, I've got uh, version three now of the requirements. Why don't, why don't we uh, talk about it, work together? So here they are. Should be three sheets, right? Mm -hmm. Should have symbol on it, right? Mm -hmm. Each sheet must have seven lines. They're up and the ante. Mm -hmm. There should be no zeros, and a plus symbol counts as three, okay? So let's code again. I'm gonna start coding here. You take that, and you start testing. So what was our goal, seven? Seven. All right, I'm gonna code. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why don't you test that? One, One two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why don't you test that one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good, how about that one? One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh-oh. Ah, there should be no zeros. Really, both. no zeros, Damn. so we have to do, all right. But we're right here, so I can just fix that. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three sheets, and all have seven, and we're done. How long did Ooh. that one take? Four minutes <laughs> versus half a minute. All right, excellent, eight to one. Thank you. So there, a demo. A demo of breaking silos and how it improves. So, shorten the feedback loop is the key of why it caused delay, or that's what you wanna do, because it caused delay. All right, on to the tools. So, how do you get started? Uh, everything is about communication, understanding each other. So. One way to do that, to get started, is to set a common high-level goal. So you wanna set a goal that is customer-centric, one such as deliver high-quality software to the customer, or deliver value continuously to the customer, or complete all of the elements of definition done on this feature. Notice they are not goals like, you know, land all the patches upstream, a developer goal, or deliver this feature to test, that's a developer goal, or test all the code, a tester code, or find as many bugs as possible, a tester code. Now those are fine sub-goals, but you have to have this overall higher uh, customer-centric goal that you both work toward, you both agree, we're not gonna be done until we hit that goal. Second tool in your toolbox is walk in their shoes. That means understand each other's processes, their tools, their environments, their priorities that they're getting from their management, and talk about those. 
And then the key is, just don't discover them. As you're making this happen, actually plan to educate each other on it. Sit down and say, here's all of our stuff, here's all of your stuff, let's look at them, see what is common, see where we're going to have issues, and fix those up front, or at least try to mitigate them up front. And of course, it, if you can, merge those together as best you can, especially at the goal level again, and then always retrospect on a regular basis so that you know that your work in understanding those goals is having an effect, that you are actually understanding each other and not having miscommunication. And fi finally, I guess, I, I highlight this one is, of course, it's all about people. So we are not teams of automatons, everyone's an individual, and again, if communication is the key, then you have to understand how individuals communicate. You have to understand their communication styles, their learning styles, their communication methods and tools, their preferences, and ideally, understand their motivation. And again, this gets to, if you have a separate organization, you know, they might be motivated from above in a different way. But again, be transparent. Get those out in the open to say, hey, this is how I'm being motivated, how are you being motivated? And then do your best to mold those into a common motivation that you can both share. And so the key is just to intentionally be a team. Not just, hey, we want to be a team, but you have to do things, you have to take actual actions up front to become that team. And this is some of the ways to do that. So next, challenges that you may face. There are many, but here are just three. First, distributed teams. So teams in silos are often organizationally distributed, and usually, in a, especially in open source, geographically uh, distributed. I mean, that is the definition of open source, right? They're distributed teams. So some of the ways you can address that are meeting in person as much as possible. Now, it's often a challenge, um, but do the best you can. At least think about trying to meet in person on some sort of cadence, if it's even annually, if, but if more, it would be better. And that's because of the, the nonverbal communication that happens uh, in communication. To the degree that you can't do that, then use video conferencing and turn the video on. Okay? I don't know how many video calls I've been on and there's no video on. If you turn it on, it's not as good as face-to-face, -face, but you still can get some nuances of the nonverbal communication out of that. So I encourage you to do that. Finally, time zone overlap is another issue. So try to uh, discuss with your team up front how you're going to address that. You can do like regional meetings with teams that are time zone compatible and then have a, a communication in between less frequently. Um, my colleagues Neil Smith and Chuck Coppola did a whole presentation on just this topic. So if you're a Red Hat employee, you can find that uh, link online. If you're not, Neil's right there, so hit him up for it. All right, another challenge, management support. So in my experience, there's several kinds of management support. Full, full, semi-full, and semi-semi. So what I mean by that is full, full, you have top to bottom management support of your effort to break silos, and the team sees the need for it and is fully supportive as well. This is the best case scenario. I've only seen it once in my career. And despite that, it still took two years to fully break down the silos um, and, and realize the, the positive results from that. Semi-full, this is management is not supporting this, but they're not you know, prohibiting it either. But the team sees the need, and they're on board and trying to do it. And that's fine. As long as you have two teams that are going to do this, they can take those tools on how to start and start working on it. 
and then start communicating that up to their management to see, tell them, see how much better this is. Um, if you do have management that prohibits this effort, well, it's a different talk, but it's a much shorter one. Get a different job. And then there's semi-semi. So this one is there's management support, sort of. There's team support, sort of. This just means there's going to be um, managers that are very enthusiastic, want this to happen. There are teams very enthusiastic that want this to happen. And other, others that are like, eh, I, I'll participate, but I'm not really into it. That's fine, too. I mean, those teams that are enthusiastic, again, can just demonstrate to the others how well this is going to work. And then the final challenge is all teams are different. And that's not, I mean, that's not really a challenge, it's just a fact, right? All, it's all about people, all people are different, so the teams are going to be different. Their characteristics, their interactions are all going to be different. The challenge is don't force uniformity. Don't make all the teams do something the same way. Don't make them all break down their silos exactly the same way. Let them find their way. What is the best way that fits their team? So those are the challenges. How do you succeed? Back to persistence. You just need to persist in these efforts because they do take time. Uh, I heard Rashid yesterday, Rashid Khan, talk about their efforts. They took, it's, he told it, said it took them four years. Um, you heard earlier uh, an effort that is ongoing at 16 months. None of these improvement efforts happen overnight. But one way to persist, to help you persist, is use an improvement cycle. And there, there are lots of different improvement cycle names. There's Plan Do Check Act, Plan Do Study Act. They're all the same. I cut mine down to just three, experiment, learn, and adapt. And I like experiment better than plan because a plan usually, if a plan fails, that has much more negative connotation than if an experiment fails. An experiment, by definition, is you don't know what's going to happen, but you're going to try something. You're going to try it short term, and you're going to try it and learn from it. See what you learn and then adapt, excuse me. Adapting can be, hey, that experiment worked great, let's expand it to other teams, or let's make it part of our SOP. It can be, well, it didn't work exactly right, but it didn't completely fail, and we see where we could tweak it, so let's adapt it, run another experiment. Or, of course, there is, you know, there can be, hey, this totally failed, but like we heard in the, the last talk, you know, there's you know, no experiment. As long as you learn from it, you learned a way not to do it. Okay? So that's how you succeed. Just persist. So let me sum up. First, can somebody tell me the name of that formula? That famous formula? No? I don't know what it is. I just Googled the sum. There it is. I don't think it's a famous formula at all. Summing up, breaking silos reduces delay, which increases profit, which keeps you from rioting. Reduce delay by shortening the feedback loops between dev and test, or any siloed groups. And it's all about people increasing the communication, reducing misunderstanding, reducing misconceptions that all cause delay. Do that by understanding each other's goals, your processes, their tools, and try to make those common as much as possible. Don't force all teams to do it the same way. And in the end, persist. Just keep trying stuff. Use an improvement cycle to get you there. You don't have to get it all in one big bang. You take it in little incremental steps. So. That's why I have. Um, I'm not going to have time for questions, but I will be around if you have any. And if uh, you didn't get anything out of this or didn't take away any ideas, then at least we can go have beer now. Thank you.